thank you all so much for coming. My name is Christian Thiemeyer. I'm the lecturer in public policy. I have an incredible team of students. Um, Stanford, in order for public policy students to graduate, they can either do a, an honors thesis or work in a team on a uh, current public policy issue. So we've been very for fortunate to partner with the County of San Mateo's Office of Sustainability. Um, my main appointment at Stanford is at the Bill Lane Center for the American West. We're interdisciplinary and we think a lot about collaboration. Um, what makes collaboration work? What are some areas that we can improve? And, and we're really excited this year to partner with the sustainable urban systems team and have teams of public policy students and teams of engineers working together, at least in parallel, um, on the issue of sea level rise. So what you'll see today is, is a snapshot of research that students have done over the past 10 weeks. And these go like very fast, so it's entirely possible that we've missed some materials from your cities. But the idea was to start somewhere, um, and we welcome your feedback. Um, we have three students who are going to take you through their presentation. If you could, we would love to hold questions just so they can get through their material and then have a conversation with you. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Great. Thank you all for being here today. We're very excited to present to you our findings on sea level rise and adaptation planning in San Mateo County. I'd first like to introduce our team. This is Will, Alex, and I'm Isabel. And we have for you a handout that we will reference during the presentation. And this presentation is a synthesis of our findings, and we do have a final report that will be coming out next week. I'd first like to start by giving an overview of our presentation this morning. First, we will start with a little bit of project context and what we had going into this project in this quarter. Then we will dive into some of our research findings and then conclude with our recommendations moving forward. We really wanted our research to build off of the work that had been done in the San Mateo County Sea Level Rise Vulnerability Assessment. Uh, we really made sure that we had a dialogue with the Office of Sustainability to make sure that our next steps were complementary from the research that had already been done. <coughs> As Priti mentioned, our team was also working in parallel with the team of engineers from Stanford, the Sustainable Urban Systems team, who will be presenting after our presentation. We wanted to make sure that we really understood what the goals were for the county um, in terms of their adaptation framework. With speaking with Hillary and Jasmine, we found that these were some of the goals that the county wanted to include in their adaptation framework. And our team really helped focus on these second two components. Uh, we really wanted to help the county think about their goals and objectives for sea level rise adaptation planning. And then also wanted to help the county outline their approach to identifying, planning, and selecting strategies to address climate change. To do so, we put together a series of research objectives that guided the work we did this winter quarter. Our first objective was to first understand what local jurisdictions in the county had been doing already with respect to sea level rise and in anticipation of future development in the area. Then we dove in and did some research related to external cities. So other cities such as Seattle and Boston that had been identified by the county as exemplary role models that we should look into for more lessons and takeaways. And then lastly, we also wanted to speak with key stakeholders to get their input on values and priorities that would guide our research. Then, this is a quick preview of the recommendations that we will talk about more at the end of this presentation. Um, but we believe that the county can have an impact related to sea level rise by helping guide cities by establishing a high level guiding vision on how the county should address sea level rise. Next, we believe that the county can help prioritize focus and resource deployment for certain communities. And then we also believe that, that the county can help facilitate coordinated future action between cities as they work on this topic. Next, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Alex, who will touch more upon our research methodology. So the way that we, I'll talk a little bit about the way that we got to these recommendations through our methodology, which we um, we developed in, in with the county at the beginning of this quarter, and they sort of evolved as we discovered new resources that would inform our research. 
So the initial scope of the project was to include all of the jurisdictions in San Mateo County. Due to limited team capacity, we dropped from four to three members at the beginning. We decided to look only at Bayside jurisdictions in the one unincorporated area of North Fair Oaks in order to get a deeper delve into the information rather than an overview of all of the jurisdictions. We first did a systematic evaluation of city publicly available documents, which included general plans, climate action plans, and three specific plans. We also looked at the county's local hazard mitigation plan and their vulnerability assessment. Um, this is the one that we, we took from the uh, vulnerability assessment in January, so it's just a snapshot in time. We didn't include the recent vulnerability assessment. We also conducted nine stakeholder interviews in order to inform the county on the values and priorities of stakeholders. We then looked at the current adaptation projects, which are current Bayside projects ongoing right now. And then we turned an eye towards the six external jurisdictions, which we do think we can inform the county on some key takeaways from these further along exemplary cities. I'll jump into the research findings here in a second. But basically, our goal is to provide a snapshot for the county of what's currently going on in the Bay. Um, in order to do this, we started with a synthesis of sea level rise policies. These came from the general plans, the climate action plans, and the specific plans. Then I'll go into our risk versus preparedness analysis, which is how we created these relative rankings to help the county prioritize their efforts, their resources, and start somewhere by directing their focus to communities that seem to need it most right now. And then we'll also cover some key interview themes from our stakeholder interviews. To start off, our survey of existing policies really direct, was directed at objective one, which is to understand what's going on in the Bay right now. What policies are cities using? What are the approaches that cities are taking? To do this, we looked at hundreds of pages from the general plans, the climate action plans, the specific plans, and we pulled out all of the sea level rise related policies and some flood related policies as well. We found that design and building codes was the most prevalent category. This is the first approach that most cities are taking. Um, I've included an example from Burlingame, um, I think from the general plan, but most of these policies deal with elevating structures or enforcing a setback. Uh, the second most prevalent area was infrastructure policies directed towards seawalls or uh, updating levees to FEMA standards. The next three were community engagement, financing, and partnerships were a little less mentioned, but were um, prevalent and we think are uh, relevant to the holistic view of adaptation planning. All of these can be found in your jurisdiction profiles where we've listed all of the information by city, which includes all of these policies, along with some evaluations from the local housing mitigation plan about where the risk areas are, as well as some of the critical assets in each city. The next portion of our analysis dealt with identifying the highest risk cities within the county um, by looking at how many assets that the city has to protect from sea level rise. The second part of this was evaluating preparedness, which we determined to be um, whether the city has a lot of specific and actionable policies geared towards sea level rise planning right now. Um, these rankings are relative, and we do think that every city could benefit from some more guidance from the county. But again, this is just to help the county prioritize efforts initially. We included seven measures of risk within our analysis. Uh, the vulnerability assessment gave us the number of class four infrastructure assets. The, SU, the sustainable urban systems team gave us their AAL or their average annualized loss risk metric, which we also included. And it's still being developed and the team will talk about that more after us. And then from the local high education <coughs> plan, we looked at percentage of total population, number of critical facilities and value of structures within the six foot sea level rise inundation area. To top off those quantitative measures, we also looked at the expected baseline change to see if a lot of cities were planning on putting up structures in the near future along the bay. The second portion of this analysis was the preparedness. So did we find a lot of actionable policies within these plans? Um, in order to incorporate the, the ongoing projects that probably aren't incorporated into the general plans because they're adopted a few years back, uh, we also included this analysis of current adaptation <coughs> projects listed here, and we're also going to be uh, giving some more information on them in our final report. The results of this analysis were to help the county prioritize their efforts. We identified these six cities as the highest risk in the county, which means they have a lot of assets to protect from sea level rise. We think that these three on the right side of the screen, Redwood City, Burlingame, and Foster City, have a lot of great uh, examples of what other cities can adapt from them. 
and then inform these other three cities that are very high risk, but could definitely use some guidance, catching up and forming some more policies in the future. <coughs> now, Isabel will talk a little bit about the stakeholder uh, values and priorities that we found. Thank you, Alex. Our next section really touched upon our third objective, which was talking with stakeholders to identify their values and priorities. We conducted a series of interviews with several different cities and organizations within the county and really used this to create an aggregate review and then draw out six main themes that we observed from these conversations. Going into these conversations, we had outlined a series of questions and goals of what we really were interested in finding out. Our first main topic that we were interested in learning about was what the current level of involvement was with this individual and their organization with sea level rise. Then we were interested in learning more about their goals and priorities, as well as what they envisioned the next steps, their next steps were. And then also looking at what they thought the role of the county would be in addressing sea level rise and big forward. Our first observation was about the tension between immediate versus long term threats. We found that in many cases, there was a lot of focus and research deployment on more immediate concerns, such as wind-borne waves, coastal erosion, or FEMA flood insurance remapping. We also found that sea level rise was sometimes brought up in context of these more immediate concerns. So it was through discussions on the more immediate apparent issues that sea level rise had been brought up. <coughs> Our next observation was about the values and priorities that a lot of these individuals and stakeholders had in the county. We found that there was a strong emphasis on having a flexible plan. And by flexible plan, we mean the acknowledgement that sea level rise is an adaptive process that it will change over time as different predictions and environmental changes occur. Therefore, having a flexible plan that can adapt to sea level rise will be very important. Um, and this was something that there was a high emphasis on. <clears throat> Additionally, there was also consideration and awareness that sea level rise will affect many populations. Therefore, really thinking through long term how different populations and different parts of the environment will be affected is something that will be very important. We also found that there was a desire for a coordinated action among cities. A lot of the cities in particular said that they would like to work more closely with their neighboring cities because there is the acknowledgement and awareness that a project in one city will affect what sea level rise impacts happen in their neighboring city. Um, there was also an awareness that doing so could help maximize research resource deployment um, and that this would also help ensure that all sea level rise scenarios were planned. Everyone was planning for the same sea level rise scenario and the sustainable urban systems team has also created in their AAL metric the average annualized loss metric, a way to include probabilistic um, proxies of different sea level rise scenarios. So that would move away from uh, doing any coordinated effort on a certain sea level rise scenario. Additionally, we also had a conversation on some of the challenges that cities anticipated. We found that tying back to this previous point, uh, some cities found it challenging to have this coordinated action part and really have a dialogue and discussion with neighboring cities. There was also an acknowledgement that the high level sea level rise vulnerability assessment from the county was extremely valuable and there was interest in having a more specific and technical plan uh, related to their city that would help them implement the projects that they were envisioning. And then lastly, we found that there was often a challenge in finding resources or looking for areas to apply for funding and certain um, measures to help them once again achieve their goals related to sea level rise. Public engagement was another critical aspect in these conversations. We found that once again, a lot of the public engagement was related to the more immediate concerns that had come up, uh, such as the FEMA remapping or levy building. Uh, we also found that there was a desire for more educational outreach sessions in the community and then more educational outreach sessions that would specifically focus on sea level rise. And then lastly, we had a conversation about what they envisioned the role of the county to be. We found that many cities uh, really valued having these city to city discussions and would think it'd be beneficial if the county could help be a facilitator in making those conversations happen. 
We also found that there was feedback that it would be useful to have the county really help guide individuals to find where they can look for resources to help their cities achieve their goals once again. And then also the acknowledgement that the county can offer sustained leadership where while there might be political turnover at some of the local cities, the county has this continued leadership that can really help execute a long term vision on sea level rise. I would now like to hand the presentation over, over to Will, who will talk about external jurisdictions. Thank you, Will. So next I'm going to talk about external jurisdiction research findings. The final section of our research is focused on what other vulnerable jurisdictions have done to plan for sea level rise. Our client recognizes that many other places in the U.S. are farther along in sea level rise planning and would, like to, would have liked to learn more. We, re we reviewed six jurisdictions that I will summarize for you. Each jurisdiction was selected in consultation with the county. So the first, the first jurisdiction we looked at was Southeast Florida, then San Francisco, Boston, New York City, Seattle, and Charleston. Uh, the six jurisdictions represent a mix of highly urban and suburban areas along the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. For each one, I will share with you one particular highlight that we believe could be of value to San Mateo County's framework. Southeast Florida is an example of how individual cities can work together towards, towards coordinated climate action. The regional compact creates a standardized online template allowing, allowing cities to customize a climate action plan unique to each city. This allows each city to use the same tools while addressing their own individual needs. This is exemplary effort shows how the county might facilitate regional cooperation by providing templates and resources that can be customized to meet local needs while working toward a common set of regional goals. San Francisco's Climate Action Plan is an extensive document with many lessons for San Mateo County as it starts its work on its adaptation plan. Much like San Mateo County, San Francisco faces similar local challenges. I would like to highlight two lessons of the San Francisco Climate Action Plan. First, like San Mateo County, San Francisco is working toward an adaptation plan. San Francisco first started with a technical committee to look at sea level rise vulnerability for city-owned assets. This resulted in development of recommendations about proactively incorporating sea level rise risk considerations into all new capital construction. San Francisco requires that any new construction receiving city capital planning funds must incorporate the city's guidance to address sea level rise vulnerabilities, risk, and adaptation. And second, after developing these capital planning guidelines, the city created an action plan laying out the necessary key steps leading up to the implementation of an adaptation plan. This includes an overarching mission and goals for sea level rise planning, identifying data gaps, and creating a roadmap for adaptation. We could see our work feeding into a similar type of action plan for the county, serving as an intermediary step before adaptation planning. We think there is great value in helping the public understand many steps San Mateo County is taking to eventually create this framework. After Superstorm Sandy, New York City had developed a robust series of plans for sea level rise and flooding. In particular, New York City has established very specific building codes and requirements for structures in specific vulnerable areas. New York translates risk into building requirements by making it obvious, one, what the actual steps are, and then two, what can and cannot be built, which informs both the government and public on future land use. By following New York's focus on zoning and building design, including very technical and actual items, San Mateo County can help coordinate regional guidance for all 11 Bay cities. Boston has been very proactive in integrating cities through general community outreach and educational workshops. They do an exemplary job at incorporating their community members in the planning of sea level rise. As you can see above, 50, over 15,000 people have been involved in their sea level rise plan. Boston's efforts can help inform the county on, as it begins to shape its community engagement, which, help, which our team believes to be essential to shaping an accurate and actionable plan. We wanted to highlight Seattle's mission, which had a strong emphasis on equity, co-benefits, and natural systems. All three of these areas overlap with what the county has shared to be very important pieces of its adaptation planning. Seattle's adaptation plan looks at interaction between climate, environment, health, society, and government. Seattle's work to elevate the social and behavioral context as part of its adaptation planning would be very helpful to San Mateo County. The last jurisdiction we looked at was Charleston. In Charleston, we observed a strong commitment to community engagement. 
Charleston created a Together We Are Stronger campaign, which prioritizes the development of a network of informed and participative partners. The city created resource, resources like an interactive map that allows <laughs> residents to see how sea level rise projections may change over time. For San Mateo County, Charleston's work shows how important it is to develop tools that are flexible, given that sea level rise projections are subject to change. <coughs> I'd like to now transition to our team's final recommendations for the county as it continues to work on its adaptation framework. These recommendations are informed by our research of the local policies and context, stakeholder interviews, and our research into other vulnerable coastal areas. We've created three recommendations for how the county can play a role in each step of the planning process. One, based off external jurisdictions and interviews, we believe the county has an opportunity to guide regional sea level rise planning by working with stakeholders to create a unified high level vision, much like Southeast Florida. Second, based on our review of city policies, current projects and public documents, we, sh we will outline certain communities that we believe the county should prioritize. And then third, based on our stakeholder interviews and research, which showed scenario planning inconsistencies, we see an important future role for the county as a facilitator and info sharing. The county can play a leading role in developing a vision for sea level rise adaptation by one, creating a unified mission statement, two, convening focus groups to develop and inform goals, and three, setting countywide target dates for planning achievements. In addition to a target date, we also envision milestones leading up to the target in order to track progress along the way. We believe we think Boston, Boston's 2030 campaign does an excellent job laying out target dates like these. Upcoming in our final report, or excuse me, one, one example we had, we had was San Francisco's mission state we thought was a very good example, we'd like to read it now. Make San Francisco a more resilient city in the face of immediate and long-term threats of sea level rise by taking measures to protect and enhance public and private assets, natural resources, and quality of life for all. We thought this was a really good initial mission statement for you guys to see. Upcoming in our final report, we'll be sharing more mission statements and goals from each external jurisdiction. We think San Francisco is an excellent example for the county to initially consider. As stated earlier, we created two groups for the county to initially focus on. The first group is San Mateo, East Palo Alto, and Menlo Park. The second group is Redwood City, Burlingame, and Foster City. It is important to highlight that these two groups are compared relative to each other. They still have a lot to continue to prove on with regards to sea level rise planning. We focused on these two groups because they are all high risk areas and, and have shown impressive initial efforts in sea level rise planning. The county can focus on these two groups in order to inform the rest of the county. Because San Mateo has limited resources, we thought this would be a good starting point. I'd like to hand it off to Alex now that will wrap up our third recommendation. So now that Will has sort of laid the foundation for our first two recommendations to create this guiding vision and then to prioritize efforts, I'll go into the more nitty gritty about the facilitation and how the county can coordinate efforts moving forward. Um, as Will said, out of our stakeholder interviews and also through inconsistencies and in scenario planning that we saw in our policy review, we think that one of the first steps that the county should take is to develop standards for sea level rise projections. Our stakeholders also call for more localized projections. So um, I wanted to refer back to the state of California sea level rise guidance document in order to um, help with this effort going forward, which suggests starting with the baseline of levels and then localizing through considering time frame, adaptive capacity, and risk tolerance of each jurisdiction, and also to coordinate with other agencies when adopting these sea level rise projections. We also think the county can create a public resource which would consolidate sea level rise strategies and guide future progress. Uh, the work that our team has already done extracting a lot of sea level rise policies, as well as the work that the sustainable urban systems team will talk about later, we think that plays directly into creating this resource repository for cities to refer to and adopt similar strategies. We also think this is a great opportunity for the county to create a discussion about high level principles, such as building and plan flexibility. Um, also, it can be a place to fill the holes that seem to be barriers to progress, like finding financing opportunities. And then the third step is a more iterative progress, uh, which is to track progress across cities to sustain coordinated and timely action. We thought this might be able to be done by building out the Sea Change website, but essentially it's a place where 
cities can report on their current status as it's updated um, in the coming years. The stakeholders also called for potentially the county to be responsible for reporting on these multi-jurisdictional projects, uh, given that there's sometimes a gray area on who should be informing cities on the interactions between the multi-jurisdictional projects and their own city efforts. Lastly, Isabel will finish up with talking about future considerations. Thank you, Alex. As Alex mentioned, we have put together some future considerations for how our research can be continued and what other things that we, we think are necessary for integrating into the adaptation framework process. First, of course, we acknowledge that since we're only focusing on Bay cities, expanding to coastal cities will be the next first step. We also like to think about integrating in an analysis and forecasting of macroeconomic factors such as recessions, economic downturns will be important as well as also considering how um, environmental impacts such as fires or earthquake can really Im impact how the adaptation framework is not only deployed, but also thought about um, moving forward. And then also keeping in mind that the political context, whether it's at the federal, state, or local level, can also influence this guiding process. And we'd like to conclude by extending our sincere gratitude to everyone who has helped us throughout the way. We really appreciate all the insight and time from our stakeholders, um, without which we could have not made our informed recommendations. We'd also like to thank the Sustainable Urban Systems team for their input and technical expertise <laughs> along the way. And then we would also like to thank the Office of Sustainability and San Mateo County for their guidance throughout the process. And of course, we'd like to thank our professor, Preeti, without which we could have not done this project and formulated our recommendation. So we would like to conclude by thanking you all once again, and we're now happy to open up for any questions. Thank you. sensitive here, but I'm curious, when you group the, the six cities, how, um, I see San Mateo is well represented, and Burlingame is well represented, but I'm curious, in my mind, I would have split those six cities, but I'm curious how you put them in the other spot. Yeah, I think, um, so our risk analysis was more quantitative, and it incorporated some of the metrics from the FPS team. I think from the preparedness side, we have to acknowledge that we looked at the most documents that we could within a quarter, and we definitely think that there's other things that would have informed those rankings. Um, this is just what we found in, in looking at the policies and the couple of resources that we looked at for each city. I said that I could help contribute it from Berlin Game, and I think we're we got bumped up a little bit because it's a draft general plan that has kind of the latest and greatest and just and technical things to go. Uh, wrote a lot of that herself, so um, I think that kind of consistent with a lot of the things that were shown here, the, the kind of developing the U.S. policies and getting them down, uh, adopted in, in a way um, it's something that uh, hopefully other, other, other jurors pick out. I mean, you know, so, I mean, the reason I bring it up is that in Burlington, as we talked about it, there is no comprehensive sort of defensive line. Every parcel's on their own. Whereas in San Mateo, they're working on, and, and Jimmy was working on that uh, North Shore View seawall, and it's a collective protection. So I'm just curious how a, a collective protection versus individual parcel protection is a problem. Yeah, and actually, that, that question for the group. See scenarios where it was collective versus individual with the kind of oddity with, with the one size doesn't fit all because um, some jurisdictions is very fragmented and others there's single ownership that allows a, a more integrated project. Um, did you get into any of that or was it more higher level stuff? I think, um, as Alex mentioned, we were looking at a limited selection of documents, but <clears throat> We looked at a lot of the general plans and some of the more recent ones that really outline specifically how they 
had these higher level goals for sea level rise was what we were also looking at. We did look at specific plans um, and some projects that have been happening in the cities themselves. Um, but we found that a lot of our waiting on the preparedness had to do with what kind of unified city level goals that they had outlined. Um, and then we tried to supplement with these specific projects based on specific plans, but we do acknowledge that we weren't able to comprehensively look at everything that was going on, but that was really what we were using to inform our research process. And just to, to reiterate, um, those groups are both the high risk based off of the vulnerability assessment and like further research. So we kind of started there and then moved forward with the documents that they were mentioning earlier. One of the recommendations that San Francisco and had done as part of their climate action plan was to map all of the parcels along both the bay and coast, and that's included in their paper that the county should go through this process to say who owns what, and then help as a facilitator to either convene where there's fragmentation or a single ownership so they can know who, who you should work with. Great, thank you for bringing that up, because I, I do think if you had the time before you finish up your project, you may want to look at that, mm -hmm. because so the city of San Mateo and the city of Foster City do have a very unified sort of defense. One could argue the strengths and weaknesses of those, but it is unified. Whereas North of County Point, and uh, with the exception of the Sable Bay project uh, in the south part of the county, there isn't really a unified approach to this. So I would encourage you beyond the plans to look at that and, and to a point of how, how those individual parcels are protected. And one can make the case that the parcels in San Mateo, the city of San Mateo, and the city of Foster City are protected by a mm -hmm. universal. Michael, uh, just, to, yes. just to clarify as well, I think the direction they went might have been based on some of what they got from us. It was more of a policy analysis at this right. point. While the projects, we completely agree, it, it creates a whole different line of defense. We were really starting from the place of what's really being added to the policies and the plans that they have in place. And I think that's where we acknowledge it's, it's not perfect, but I think they were getting the direction from us. So we want a better understanding of what's happening um, within our, our, our policy guidance and our documents. Um, if there's a way, you know, they have a week and a half to figure out the way that we can do it. I just want to kind of, you know, yeah. Put it out there saying they're, they're literally in their finals, they're wrapping up next week. Um, so, if there's a way they can include that consideration, kind of the risk versus fairness scale that they've done, um, you know, I'm sure they're looking into it, but just wanted to say. If they do that in the next week, you should hire them. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of my own goal, right? But yeah, I just wanted to say that they, that's how we set up the scope from the get go. So, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Hi, I'm from Murray. And I'm working on something kind of similar to what you did. I'm very curious about the code that you looked at. Um, so you said you looked at building code and design code for San Mateo County and then the um, municipalities as well. And you said building code and building code can be really expansive. So um, I was just wondering if you could be a little more specific what code you looked at? Sure. Um, we found these policies and grouped them into their categories from the general plans and climate action plans primarily. So we didn't actually look at any like building codes, zoning codes, municipal codes. We didn't go into that because we didn't have the time to do so. Um, the codes that we took are just from those general plans. We found that designing building codes is like the area that cities look at first when they're trying to protect their assets. So like we need to elevate our structures. Um, and look at future construction projects. So yeah, we didn't actually go in depth into any building and zoning analysis separate from the general plan and specific plans and climate action plans. And we, we did find that when we were doing external research, New York City is a really good example of having very technical building codes and zoning codes. Um, and the image that we had shown was an example of how they're very specific and tailored to different buildings and environments um, being very, um, discerning on how requirements would differ based on different contexts. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sarah Hoffman. I'm from Boston. Um, you bring up a good point. New York is great in the sense that they learn a lot from Japan. I'm curious, how did that compare to other state laws then? Um, 
Boston has a very uh, broad plan, but mm -hmm. did they get into specifics of like New York? No, I think New York was much more technical. Boston was more high level, um, looking through their Boston 2030 initiative. They really were focusing on incorporating community. So I think while New York was more technical, Boston had much more community involvement and was more focused on these high level goals and priorities. Um, they had a series of you know, outreach events on the city blocks and work, se work sessions, um, which we've out outlined in our report that I think I think the strength of Boston is the community part and the high level visions, not as technical. And then New York had more of the technical um, outlined plans. Other questions? I was just thinking through the difference when we're talking about preparedness with a number of policies in one general plan mm -hmm. versus another versus everything that's happening on the ground. I wonder if kind of just ranking the cities based on you know, like number of policies or extent of policies might might make more sense versus preparedness so that doesn't uh, people don't take that out of context. I'd be curious if the cities if you feel like that might uh, Yeah that's good to just as feedback. It, it may be that wherever you do do rankings you just want to clarify what if the rankings are based on what adopted policies are there, which that is significant when policy is adopted that's that means something. So that that is one indicator. But then you can do another ranking based on the projects on the ground, such as the levy project, and Foster City, and uh, San Mateo, which are kind of a different calculus. And, and each one is a useful ranking in its own. But I think yeah, if somebody kind of just takes the top level ranking and says, oh well, it looks like Portland you know, is number one. And, strategy. We have some good policies, but not a strategy. Um, <laughs> um, that at least you kind of put some qualifications on the different Thank you. Thanks. 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 Any last questions or comments before we hand it off to the urban systems team? Good work. Thank you. Thank and if anything all. else comes up, you can feel free to reach out to our team. Happy, happy to answer so your questions. Shoot an email. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.